We're here to answer your game, gaming, and game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head on over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Uh, social media works too. We're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Well, the best way is for questions come through the website. Actually, I had a bunch pour in over the weekend, which is awesome because it's an easy way for me to rank them and see them. They go out in my inbox. But you know what? Send them on Twitter, send them on Facebook. The only thing you risk is I miss it in all the clatter, chatter, and everything else scrolling by in my feed. I'm not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. All right. Well, this week we've got a timely question from Nate Parker, who asked this on Twitter. Do you participate in any board game room related New Year's resolutions? Example, play 5x5 or 10x10, reduce the pile of shame by X games this year, play certain games a number of times, no funding Kickstarter games. Which ones and why? If so, if not, why not? All right. Thanks for the question, Nate. Uh, it's a new year. Welcome to 2020 which, man, still sounds weird. I'm having a real difficulty saying 2020, because every time I say it, I think it should be something I'm talking about on one of my star cyberpunk RPG books and not my actual calendar. Um, it's, I don't know, 2020 is messing with my head. Year 2000 was fine. 2010, I was like, ah, that sci-fi movie. Yeah, I don't know. 2020 just feels weird yeah. to me. But um, one of the big traditions, of course, is setting resolutions. Um if not resolutions and goals for the next year. So Nate's question comes at the perfect time, right? Right in January. We'd actually talked about this last week. Would have been even closer to New Year's, but uh, it was good timing. So really quick answer to get right to Nate's question before we get into some other stuff is I used to do it. I used to participate in quite a few of these challenges. It was actually something I looked forward to every year. Uh, going back to when I had the Windsor Gaming Resource blog, like to be honest, it's good content. Right. It's good stuff. It's good, good social media interaction, especially when it's very active on Google Plus. There were various groups on Google Plus for all the different challenges. And it was a great way to check in with other people and see where they're doing. But I got to admit, not so much by the end of 2019. And the main reason for that is this, that this podcast, the, the blog, the whole tabletop bellhop thing. Uh, in 2018, I took what was my hobby and turned it into my job. Personally, I'm too aware of the statistical reality of goals of this type. Uh, the amount of effort required on a long-term, ongoing basis to make New Year's resolutions work is often minimized by people, which is why the gyms will be mostly empty again come Valentine's Day, year after year. Yeah. No, what really struck me this year was how many places were selling exercise equipment. And I think it's just because I happened to go to Costco, like I happened to go to the right places, but I was like, even... even um. Shoppers Drug Mart, their their holiday section changed to nutritional supplements. I was just like, wow, I, I don't remember noticing that much. <laughs> so the bellhop thing. So it didn't have a lot of impact at first, right? In 2018, when we first changed over. And part of it was I, I was still... Uh, what do you call it? I, I was still getting money from work. I was still, I can't remember the word. I wasn't laid off. I was whatever. Severance. I had a severance and I had stuff like that, right? Um, it didn't really impact us. It didn't really change my whole lifestyle until mid-year 2019. And what happened mid-year 2019 was Origins or the Origins Game Fair 2019. That was that was really the turning point where where the hobby became the job, right? Because I attended the con as press for one, and it was work. Like, if you want more info on that, read my blog post about it. I, I go on and on about attending Origins as a, as work, as opposed to just as as a as a, a gamer, as someone there to have fun. And that was a big change. But the biggest part of that, though, was coming home with a pile of games, a pile of review copies. Um, what I like to call my pile of obligation. Now, I have received few review copies over the years, right? Doing the Windsor Gaming Resource thing or just being a content creator, or being someone even known just locally for running gaming events. It happened to, like now and then, right? Like, I don't know how many times a year, three to five times a year, whatever. It wasn't a big deal. But like coming home from Origins, I had a pile of games. That's when it felt like that's when the weight felt, right? Like that's when it was an obligation. I had work to do. It wasn't just, hey, I got a couple more games to play. No, I have these games I need to do. I need to develop a relationship with these publishers. This is what I do as a job now. I can't just slough it off. That's when it became an obligation. 
Yeah. And now this obligation, this is far more likely to uh, drive people to achieve things in general, be it work, financial, or what have you. Mm -hmm. For most people, if you don't run a mile tomorrow, no one really cares. Yeah. But if you don't do that one thing that someone has invested in you to do, that's different. Yeah. No, totally true. I, like, I, I, like I said, I owe people. It's an obligation. It's an actual, I, I am obliged to review these games to do the work. Now, it's January. I am still working on creating review stuff from stuff I got at Origins 2019, even at this point. Heck, the review we've got later in the show for Chocolatiers is one of many games I brought home from Origins. Now, I'm almost done going through everything from Origins. Like, I did the count. There's only, like, five left. But there are some more to do. Now, since getting back, I've been in touch with and am now working with a wide variety more publishers. Origins, that was the other big thing Origins did, was open the door, right? The, the floodgates opened up. I now have all these contacts. I've met these people. I have people's names. Plus, my name's out there. People know us, right? We've been around for a year and a half now at this point. So... Some publishers are sending me stuff. And one of the things that I don't have is the the freedom to decide when to do things as much anymore. So, for example, Japan Anime Games reached out to me and was like, we want you to review Tante Koro right now. Right now, you need to do it. We're going to launch a Kickstarter. So I got Tante Koro and I took pictures of Tante Koro and I got my game group together and we played Tante Koro and then nothing because they delayed the launch of their Kickstarter. And this keeps happening. I publishers contact me. They're like, hey, we're launching a Kickstarter and I need the review live on this day. Or, hey, we sent you these games. We need them done. Now, most of the stuff I brought home from Origins didn't have that restriction, which is awesome. People were just like, hey, give me a review sometime. Awesome. And I can put that off. But the problem is stuff shows up every day. Possibly that box back there is something else I need to review in the next month. And I don't know that yet. So this is why some of the origin stuff still hasn't been done but other things have gotten done. And part of why it's hard to sign up for a challenge when I don't even know what I need to play or review next month. Yeah, and to be clear, especially for newer listeners of the show who might not be as familiar with our reviews, well, yes, there are free games being received here. We strongly believe in yeah. giving honest reviews, regardless of how these were, these games were acquired. For reviews which were less than shining, one only need to look yeah. back as far as the recent Tower of Madness review, in which we had a number of problems from the <laughs> unboxing right through to gameplay concerns and, and little limited uh, long-term enjoyment of the game. So Sticky dice. Yeah, sticky dice. Sticky dice. That's all I got to say. Sticky dice. Yeah. <laughs> May Suggins is already in the chat room. Yes. <laughs> yep. Okay. So... It's these obligations that make signing up to do any form of challenge difficult. I, I feel guilty working on my personal pile of shame when I have a pile of obligations, right? Um, the other thing, too, is like the 10 by 10 challenge, right? That means I'm going to sit down and deep dive a game. And I love the concept of this because so often games are one and done. I love the idea of really diving into a game and seeing all the the instances, all the, all the idiosyncrasies, right? But... Diving into the same game 10 times means less time for me to try new games and get reviews done, which as a content creator, you guys don't want to hear about the same game 10 weeks in a row, right? You want to hear about different things. Probably stop talking about Azul. <laughs> yes, partly. There are certain games that I do, do play, but, I, but the other thing too is not getting any new games or only one new game a month, like, doesn't work when I'm trying to constantly put out new content, right? It's it's a definite change in focus. Yeah. So while 10 planes of a game doesn't really sound like much, no. when you have a large collection, it means a lot less games will get played, especially if you're into heavier games mm -hmm. and take up a whole evening for one play. Yeah, definitely. Like, like those epic games. Wow. Like, can you imagine trying to get in 10 games of Twilight Imperium? <laughs> Now, again, I noted I didn't really feel the pressure of this until Origins 2019. So way back on episode 22 of our podcast, uh, we did a look back at 2018. We recorded that on Boxing Day uh, 2018, and we talked about some of our goals for 2019. And I thought it would be cool to compare what we said then to where we are now and I actually went back and listened to the episode and went through the notes. So I'm going to go through some of the stuff we talked about then 
and compare it to where we are now, whether like, I, I guess, compare the challenge, not all of them are challenges, but just compare last year to this year. So this is, it's, it's 2020. So here's our hindsight is 2020 segment, right? So in 2018, I noted I had played 116 different games. These are games, not expansions, and played those games a total of 295 times, which sounds really impressive when you put it that way. Now, looking at this year, I got to say, I, if I'm, if gaming is not my job, I'm doing a good job because I got a lot more gaming. I had 135 different games played and 436 different gameplays. And I got to say, I'm not disappointed by that number at all. I, that, I'm pretty happy with seeing that. And I expect that next year is probably just going to go up. Now, my most played game for last year is Race for the Galaxy. Now, 100% of that is due to Board Game Arena because I play it on Board Game Arena. I have a game going right now. And I'm thinking going into the future, I'm, I'm still, I haven't decided. For 2020, I may not log my plays on Board Game Arena. I, I, I don't know. I don't know their game plays. We play. We play through full games of Race for the Galaxy. That's, part of me is like, I want to log them because it is a gameplay, right? And if you don't log them, I don't know. I played the game. I didn't physically get it out, but we played. So I haven't decided. Now, number two is Gloomhaven which I'm actually surprised wasn't something else from Board Game Arena, but you know what? It makes sense. We play and stream our games pretty much every Friday. We miss a few weeks, but we played most Fridays of last year. So there was a lot of Gloomhaven plays getting in. And some of the earlier games, we played multiple sessions in one night. So that number's way up there. Yep. You can join us live at 8.30 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash tabletopbellhop. Yeah, Tori, Cat, or Kator, as they're now known. Um... We'll be there with Deanna and I. Sometimes we do some solo plays. Sometimes we do some um, random dungeons, but we try to play Gloomhaven every Friday. So second most played game 2019 was Gloomhaven. Uh, that was followed by Kokuku, which, to be honest, comes as no surprise to me because uh, one of the main things being it's so quick, you tend to play multiple times in one sitting, and I love the game. Next is Seven Wonders. Again, that's due to playing on Board Game Arena. We always have a game of Seven Wonders. I may just stop logging my plays of Seven Wonders because I don't care. I tend to just click through on most of those. Uh, up next is a physical gameplay, and that was Eminent Domain. Now, I played a ton of this because that game has a learning curve, for one, and it takes a bit to grok. So every time I taught it to a new group, I played the base game with them at least once or twice. And what it was is I was trying to review the Escalation expansion. So I would break out the game, I would play it twice with this group, and then the next week break it out again with the same group with Escalation. So that got a lot more plays than usual just because of that learning curve. Now I'm going to be playing even more Eminent Domain in 2020 because I still have the Exotica expansion. That's one of the things I brought back from Origins I haven't gotten to yet. Uh, next for most plays is Takedo. Again, Board Game Arena. Played a lot of games. i got to admit I've stopped playing Takedo on there, but it's there. And then next was Gizmos, which actually kind of surprised me. But you know what? When I first got that, I was bringing it out to every Easy Mode event. I was teaching it to a lot of people. I even played that at a couple cons. We brought it to Queen City Conquest and played at the VIP party. But it just I was surprised to see it because I personally haven't had Gizmos to the table for a little while. But, man, it got a lot of plays. Like it beat out Azul last year. Yeah, I know. That was a big game for you. Uh, definitely. Yeah. So even I managed 49 different games. Uh, nice. you know, my stats got a little skewed this year. As halfway through, I started feeling guilty recording all <laughs> my digital plays, both BGA and otherwise. And I did stop recording those and started only recording real game plays now instead, yeah. which lowers my numbers. But for me, it felt more valid. So I don't know. You're still playing the game like you're playing it from start to finish. It's a complete version of the game. No, it is. Uh, I, you know, for me, like like can't stop probably would have been my number one game yeah, because so we much. play like three or four games of those a day sometimes but i i don't know it's it's yeah i, I haven't decided maybe, maybe the chat room can help me out there i i don't know should i log my i wish there was a different way to log it like i, I wish i could log like digital play physical play like there yeah. are two buttons well you can i mean you can do well on for me i do location so i have location oh yeah see i don't do so that I just can, on i can break everything up by location uh, and and everything on board game arena is is on board game arena. Everything on Steam is is log was logged on Steam. Yeah, that makes sense. But it, for me, it just it didn't feel the same. I it didn't feel as honest to me. And it, it, it was a personal choice. I'm not. Yep. You know, it's not like we're it's not like we're competing. So yes, that's true. <laughs> Like, the other thing, too, is it's easy for me to look and go, yeah, yeah, that's because of Board Game Arena. Like, yeah. I know which games are from oh, Board yeah, Game Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, I've never played uh, that silly pirate uh, social deduction game on yeah. uh, 
uh, in in real life, or or even Libertalia, can't stop yeah, or Lib Libertalia, or can't stop. Uh, I've played Tokaido, I think, once in real life, or or twice this year in real life, compared to the sixty or seventy plays yep. I've got otherwise. So, all right. So looking at my stats, um, I told you I didn't sign up for a ten by ten, but if I did, I actually would have succeeded, but only if it could be any game. Like I didn't pick the games ahead of time. And if I could count the board game arena plays, if I don't count the board game arena plays, I actually would have gotten the a five by five challenge. There were five games, physical copies. I played 10 or more times this year, but nowhere near a 10 by 10. But again, this doesn't surprise me, right? Like I, I don't plan on doing 10 by 10 challenges because there's nothing I want to play 10 times right now because there's other stuff I could be playing. Yeah, I only got a, uh, eight games more than 10 times. That's still not bad. Uh, and but again, a number of those were BGA prior to me stopping recording those plays. Uh, if I hadn't stopped recording, I definitely would have gotten the ten by ten uh, in digital digitally uh, with BGA. Now the five by five wouldn't have actually been a challenge, really. Like I mentioned it because it also makes sense because I've said it before. Reviews, I don't tend to give a full review of a game until I played it at least five times. That's kind of my number in my head. Sometimes I, I by play three, I know what I'm going to say. Sometimes it takes eight plays, but five's the arbitrary number in my head that I got to play a game five times before I do a full review. I'll, I'll give you initial thoughts, reviews. I'll talk about the game on the podcast. But by the time I do up like the full blog post review, I tend to play the game five times. So there's lots of games I played at least five times this year. Almost every game I brought home from Origins, I played at least five times before talking about it. So five by five, like I could do that probably in my sleep. Like yeah. I, I, I could probably do a 25 by five or a 40 by five by the end of the year. Yeah. I, I think though, if I, if I completely exclude all the digital plays, I think I was a tiny bit short of the five by yeah. five. Um, I, but only a tiny bit. And I think literally if I played a couple more rounds of go cuckoo at extra yeah. life, I probably would have done it. <laughs> that probably would have done it. <laughs> so yeah, except that's part of the problem too, right? When you come down, it's all about, well, I got to show you these games you missed, right? Yeah. So it's, so, we you know, play this things long a bunch list of you know, 50 games or whatever that I've yeah. played, but I've played most of them once or twice. <laughs> all right. So up next last year, I talked about the best new to me games, right? So these are, these are hot games that came out in 2018, but didn't come out. These are games I played in 2018. Because as we've said many times on this podcast, we are not about the new hotness, or if we are, it's the new hotness from 2011 or so, right? So same thing here. So just for, for sake of completeness, I'll tell you what my top of 2018 are. Uh, Anachrony, still love it. Fallout, the board game, I got to admit, haven't played it in a long time. I was really digging on it. It's been a long time since I hit the table. Bruce, still dig it. Uh, St. Petersburg second edition, which surprises me, but I do remember getting caught on that. Hasn't seen the table much this year. And of course, Azul. Azul was my biggest play last year. And then I also listed the biggest surprise of the year, which was Laser Riders, which I got to admit, I haven't played much this year, but I, it's still a great game. I no, Nothing against Laser Riders, it just hasn't come out. And I also bothered to mention my RPG of the year, which was Worldwide Wrestling from uh, Nathan D. Paoletta, which I, you can't go wrong there. Still a fantastic game. So looking at this year, uh, top game of the year has got to be Go Cuckoo. I, I have had way too much fun playing that since Wayne Humphrey convinced me to pick it up at Origins. I, I, that game's just fantastic. I can't believe how much fun it is with such a wide variety of players for what's basically a four-plus age kids game. Yeah, for me, I, my top game of the year has, has to be Duke with my son. Uh, yeah. Those plays with him have really been sort of my gaming highlight of the year overall. Yeah, fair enough. And you have the Lord's Edition, right? Uh, is that what it's called? I think, I think so, so yeah, yeah, the newer one. Yeah. yeah. I noticed we've been selling a lot of copies, which I'm guessing is from the two-player date night article. Um, next for me would be Tyrants of the Underdark. Uh, this is our example of, uh, you know, new hotness from, I think, 2014. Um, I'm late to the party. I know it. Everyone's been telling me every time I talked about this game, oh, you got to get it, you got to get it. Well, I got it. It's great. You are all right. Best deck yielding game I played in a long time. So that's my number two for 2019. And up for me is the DC deck building. Uh, this time my daughter was able to join in on, uh, on uh, with us. You know, it's it's a multiplayer game. And I had not expected her to actually have any interest in this game at all. I mean, I got it for something, again, for my son and I to do together. And the fact that she joined in and it became more of a family event than I had ever hoped that's for awesome. made it all the better. Uh, I, I need to get it to the table more often than I do, I think. Uh, up next for me is Imhotep, a uh, brilliant gateway game, a uh, surprising amount of depth 
for for what seems simple. Uh, lately, I've been playing with the new Dynasty expansion, which adds even more variety, and I'll have more about that in our Week in Review segment. Uh, next up for me would be uh, the Harry Potter, uh, the Harry Potter Hogwarts battle. Uh, again, family playtime, and, and that's really yeah. kind of the, what it's all about for me. So, Fair enough. Uh, next, I'm going to mention Veenhouse Deluxe. Now, this is one of those ones that's rough just because I haven't I haven't published a full review of this yet. I haven't had my five plays. Um, part of it is I haven't tried the 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 other vintage. I forget what they call them. The other side of the board, the more complicated version of the game, the, the new version. Um, I'm tempted to leave this one and not say it's for this year. And it might be for next year, but technically I did play the base game in 2018, so I guess it belongs on this list. Maybe it'll be on next year's list, too, with the other side of the board. Overall, I love this game. Vital Lacerda, I have not played a bad game from him. So, like, if you like heavy games, it's definitely definitely the way to go. Yeah, and I mean, for me, the rest of my gaming has really mostly been focused on BGA. You know, yeah. I, and, and there's a lot of it. I mean, I'm playing the, the number of games I'm playing. I, I generally have 11 games on the go at any one time. Wow. So there's a lot of gaming going on. It's just not on a physical table. Uh, final one for me for 2019 is going to be War Chest. I love the way this game makes me think. Abstract strategy game that actually reminds me of the Duke that Sean's talking about while being completely different from the Duke at the same time, which which somehow works. Um, for how much I dig this game, though, I didn't play it that many times. Like, when I look at my actual number of plays, it's a lot lower. I actually, in my head, was thinking I got this in 2018, but I checked my game plays, and I got it in February 2019. So it's a 2019 game, but it was earlier in the year. It, this is one I need to play more. This is one that got, got lost because of Origins, right? This is one I owned, and I'm on to the new hotness, whether it's new or not. New to me games, new stuff, and I, I, mean, I need to get that out more often. I got to start bringing that one out to, to pubs and bars when Deanna and I have a night off. Yeah, no, and it was a great game. I mean, we, you and I got a couple of plays in on it. Yep. It's, a, it's a great game. Again, it's it's got that Duke feel while being so different. Um, but again, you know, it's it's got a lot of competition along with every other game. Oh, yeah, right like now. everything else, right? It's it's hard to get games to the table. And then since I did it last year with Razor Riders, biggest surprise of the year. Um, I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to pick a specific game. This is going to be the licensed games from Ravensburger because I got to admit, I'm still kind of shocked by this. How good... Ravensburger got out of nowhere. Like Ravensburger always put out like the Aaliyah games and they were good, but like these licensed games, starting with like Minecraft Builders and Biomes, Horrified with Universal Monsters, Jaws, even if it wasn't my favorite, though I need to get some more plays in, but just it's a solid game. And while I haven't played them, I've heard really good things about the Disney Villainous games, which I've completely overlooked. But now knowing that they're put out by Prospero Hall and Ravensburger, I really want to try Villainous now. Like I, like they, they, shocked me by how good these license games are like for 2020 i'm really looking forward to they're doing a back to the future yeah i know i have to say um like the minecraft was good and i enjoyed it and as a minecraft fan i really enjoyed it but for me the biggest surprise was horrified um mm -hmm. i did not expect that to be a good game i was expecting it to be fluffy and yeah. it wasn't it was a surprisingly solid game with a real you know difficulty curve to it that you mm -hmm. can adjust with the number of monsters and and I was shocked. Yeah, no, I, like I said overall, I, it's, I'm cheating. My, my surprise for the year is it's basically Prospero Hall, right? Like who yeah. are working with Ravensburger to put these games out. All right, 2019 goals um, that we set. Sorry, 2018, 2019 goals. Yeah, so we set these in 2018. We set some goals for, for the bellhop for us. Um, our first one was to hit 100 subscribers on YouTube. And Sean watches the numbers a little bit more than I did. How did we do? 274 people currently so, so yeah we've definitely hit the uh the 100 mark we got our vanity name so we don't have <laughs> yes. to be described as youtube.com slash colon polar fg yes it was bad whatever the heck it was yep so youtube.com slash tabletop bellop excuse me gets you to us so now what about 2020 i i, I gotta admit i'd love to say a thousand subscribers right like that that's the goal it's it's a huge benchmark on YouTube. It's one that would be awesome if we could achieve it. Like it, it's, I, I forget what they call it, partner, affiliate, whatever the hell YouTube calls it. But it's the thing that lets us start actually making money on YouTube, which would be awesome. But I don't know. I like, that's a lot from 274. That's, that's 756 subscribers. Yeah. Though I gotta admit, some of our, YouTube does seem to be doing better and better for us lately. So I don't know, what do you think? Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's impossible, but uh, it's going to take some pushing. 
Um, yeah. So honestly, we're not even asking you to hit the bell and get upload notifications. Honestly, I find those annoying and don't use them for anybody. But just being a subscriber, even if you rarely watch a video, can be a big help. So, you know, if you know, if you know someone who's, uh, you know, even if they don't use YouTube and hit the follow, the subscriber button, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it's it, until you hit a thousand, it becomes it's a it's a silly numbers game. Uh, yes. And then over a thousand uh, is, is all kind of bonus. But for some reason, they have arbitrarily decided that 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 one yeah. number uh, seems to matter. So. And to be honest, this this goes for everyone. If you want to help a, a content creator on YouTube, just hit that subscribe button. Yep. Don't necessarily turn on the notifications. If, if personally, I'm at the point now where if I look at your channel and you have gaming content, I sub. Yep. Like I just want more gamers on YouTube. I want yep. more gaming content in the world, even though maybe there are competition, whatever. I just I literally, if you share your YouTube channel on and I watch one of your videos, if I watch even one, I'm gonna hit sub. Right. Like that's just what I do. I hit sub on on everyone I watch just to say thanks. Like, hey, thumbs up because that number is important. It's unfortunate, yeah. but it's a thing. Yep. So I don't know if, I, if our goal is like a thousand, we'll say our goal is a thousand. I was more thinking like five hundred, maybe maybe seven fifty. But you know what? A thousand's what matters. Yep. So I guess it is. All right. Next was another successful goal. Um. At the start of the year, uh, Deanna and I noted that we wanted to attend three gaming conventions, if possible, as the Bellhop team, not just as people going. There were three cons we had picked were Breakout Con in Toronto, Origins in Columbus, Ohio, and Queen City Conquest in Buffalo, New York. And Deanna and I did manage to make it to all three. Well, unfortunately, I was only able to make it to Breakout Con this year, but it was my first time there. And I really, really yeah. found, you know, now I understand why people were talking about it so much and why it's such a great con. It was great to represent the Bellhop team as I was in there covering all these fantastic panels that they had last year, and I'm uh, looking forward to making it back again this year. Now, as for 2019, um, I think the goal is going to be the same. Like, I would love, right now, I would love to say we're going to go to four cons this year, and then next year we're going to go to five, and the year after we're going to go to six. But right now, I, that's not in the budget. Like, it's not even close. Uh, to be honest, as it stands, I don't even know if we're going to be able to make it to those three. Uh, that's mainly due to changes in management at a couple of those cons. Uh, Origins is looking pretty good. We've already got our hotel booked, but Breakout QCC, uh, to be honest, the ball's in their court that way. Um, the way things are financially, we can afford to go if they will have us there as guests or media. And we would love to attend as guests or media either way. I would personally prefer to go as a guest and run some games. I think that'd be awesome. But if they'd rather we go as media, that's cool. Uh, if that's not going to happen, I don't know. Like, we might be able to make it work, but it's going to be rough. Yep. So I think our goals for 2020 are to hit the same three cons. What I would like to see is Sean out to more of them. Yeah, no, I'm certainly angling for all three, especially now that QCC is back at a, uh, a more beneficial time for me yeah september um, but schedules and budgets all come into play so you know again right yeah. now breakouts a good thing that's that breakout shouldn't be issues at all uh especially because it's essentially local for me yeah for um, you it's easy um and then uh we'll we'll see what's happening origins is still going to be weird and we'll, we'll get things <laughs> a we'll tabletop things bellhop cruise i i, I you know what that maybe a maybe a bar hop or a beer walk or something i don't know about a cruise uh, origins uh, origins is probably going to be a done deal at least for deanna and i like we've got yeah. the hotel booked that's yeah. uh we we got very positive feedback on our coverage of origins last year they were actually very impressed by the work we did so and plus i even if i can't i think i have to like just yeah. it, it, it's it's going to be our primary source of content in the years going forward as far as i can tell so yeah <laughs> think big i've never even been on a cruise so poncho <laughs> in the chat saying we need we need a bellhop cruise I don't know. I, I it may be if I've ever been on a cruise road trip via rail. We, we, can we have a gaming car on via rail? I do that. <laughs> we'll we'll like go to Quebec or something. We'll go see see Ryan. We'll go to Nova Scotia on the yep. on the train, and we'll we'll the, the bellhop bus. Car. Car. I'm all up for it. But yeah, I, I, nothing new for cons. I'm hoping to attend at least three. Um, know what I should do, and and I should look into this. I should look into Detroit cons. Like just to show up, throw some, throw some, throw some merch, right? Like throw some business cards around, yeah. get my name known, like show up and play. It's not like there out, aren't some, you know, cards. designers and such across the road. The, I'm uh, sure there are, right? Yeah. Like, and maybe some of our patrons and some of the, like Joe Swick, I know lives over there. Uh, Wayne Humphrey's no longer in Michigan, but I know we have some Michigan fans. 
that, that might be something we could do too. Something to look into. Uh, oh, actually, we do. I do plan on attending a con in Chatham, but that as the tabletop bellhop. But that's going to be our, our one of our extra life steps. So actually, technically, there might be more cons in there. And plus, I could I should basically throw Comic Con on there. Windsor Comic Con will be at. But that's we're going to be there running an extra life booth, trying to run money, doing demo games. But you know what? It counts. So to be honest, yeah, there might be a bit more. But yeah, I'd love to hit the big three. I, I really hope things work out. All right, up next, I, uh, this one's my biggest um, a pie on my face. This is one we've dropped the ball on for over a year now, and it's 100% my fault. Uh, I suck. We suck. I don't know. Uh, that's updating our Patreon. We keep talking about it. I am ashamed to say we've been talking about this for over a year now, and we still haven't done anything, and that's all on me. Now, Deanna has some great ideas. She sat down. She put them down on paper. We talked about it at a coffee shop. She emailed me her list. I read through it. We even talked about some of it. It all looked good. It's just we haven't actually taken the time to sit down and do it, like to decide what of her ideas we're going to go through and then actually make the changes. I got to say, part of it's um, it's hard, right? Because I am having a real hard time trying to figure out what we can do to make the Patreon more worthwhile for both us and our fans, right? Because trying to find rewards that make sense with our format, because most Patreons are making something. Like, yes, we have a pod podcast. Some some do that, right? They charge per podcast episode. I don't want to do that. I, our podcast is always going to be free. I don't plan on ever charging for our podcast. Uh, but I'm not making RPGs, right? I can't give you the maps for my D&D adventure early, right? Like, it just, like, Deanna has some great ideas, and and it's just trying to find out stuff that makes sense because we do things a bit different. Um, we're answering questions, right? You're, we're, that's what we're here for. We're answering your questions and creating content around those questions. Now, the unboxing, the reviews are all kind of part of that. Uh, but I will say, you know what? Like, I don't know. We, we got to figure out what works, but I commit to it now. We will get the patron updated soon. Um, I'm almost willing to say by the end of January, I'm tempted to say by the end of next week, just to flip and get it done. Um, but I will promise there will be more in it for you, the listener, the viewer, the people in our chat room. Um, there's going to be more for the fans than ever before. One of the changes of focus is Deanna has pointed out that the Patreon very much sounds like my ego, me just talking about what, uh, what I know and why I know it and how much years of experience I have. Instead, we want to change to go, what do you get out of this? Why, what, how is that useful for you, right? What are we going to be able to provide you instead of where does my background come from? So the other thing, as usual, uh, if you get any ideas, especially those of you in the chat room, you you are what uh, Ryan, Ryan Peach likes to call you, are, are hoplites. So a shout out to the hoplites. You are our biggest fans. You're the ones that take the time out of your week, uh, uh, out of your day on Wednesday to come and join us. You obviously have a vested interest in what we're doing. I would love to hear what you would like, what you would like to see. What are things that other pod, what other content creators have given that you think we could do? I would love to hear any ideas. And if you don't have any, that's fine. Because I, I am assuming no news is good news, right? No one's no one's given us ideas because they can't think of anything either. But yeah, it's it's my bad. Like Deanna keeps coming to me and we sat down, we're like, we're gonna do it Tuesday, and then I get sick. And then it gets put off for three months again. It's it's, it's all my bad. I, I apologize. We will get the Patreon updated. It's funny because I actually just the other day helped nudge another friend of the show uh, at Jen Cat Writes uh, oh, to work Jen, on her awesome. Patreon in the other day because she didn't know what to do. She was going to a coffee shop and she was going to work on something and it was going to be either a game or the Patreon. I said, no, you need to work on the Patreon because everyone hates it. So if you're going to make a vote, yeah. work <laughs> on the Patreon because it's horrible. Uh, the Patreon site is not fun. The Patreon no. mobile site is less or is, is not fun, but in a different because it's a different interface and they don't. Yeah. work the same at all and while you know everyone who puts out a patreon generally has a need of that money there's a reason why content creators use patreon yep. Yep. it's because how it's how they get paid but the site does not make it enjoyable to do no that it's, it's not it's that, really and it's not. it's set up with like stretch goals and stuff right like that's not yeah. the kind of thing like I, I we could throw up arbitrary if we make the 50 dollars a month we're good i don't know like it's it's yeah. it's it's, it was originally created for music people who created music and artists who created like pieces of art yep. who could be like, yes, we'll release a new album. We'll give you a bonus track. We'll record an acoustic track. We can't do that. Right. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, so yeah, maybe so, that's it. Maybe, maybe there, I, I don't know. We'll talk. I don't want to talk about Patreon. Yeah. ideas. 
All right. So anyway, it'll get done. I'll tell you what. By January 31st. There we go. By January 31st, it'll be done. We will hold There's into it. Date. By January 31st. Hopefully sooner. I actually want to do it sooner. I'd almost say tomorrow, but I want to do some unboxings tomorrow. All right. Uh, next. going This again. We're going back to episode 22. What we said we'd do. We failed on the last one. We succeeded on the first two. So, so far, so good. Uh, next, we talked about re-recording episode zero, and we said we'd have it done by the end of January. Hell no. Didn't happen. Uh, what I don't know is should it? Like, th is there a point in having an episode zero? I remember feeling strongly about it when we started. Because podcasts I liked all had episode zeros, and there were great intros. And that's what I used to do. When I would sub to a podcast, I would grab their episode zero, listen to that, and then decide to sub or not. Right. I'm so far behind on podcasts, I can't remember the last time I subbed to a new podcast. So I don't know. Is, it, right. is this even a thing people do anymore? Yeah, I mean, I, it's not something I check up for on my, on my particular podcast that I listen to. Um, I actually have a script I wrote up months ago for a quick replacement of the YouTube de default video when we were having that, yep. that issue. Um, but for, and that I think we probably should actually still do is, is we record well, that. What I that do now is I replace it every, I forget what day, the Saturday with our latest Ask the Bellhop. Right. Just that segment, the Ask the Bellhop segment, what we're doing right now, right. which I think works. So if you go there, you're always going to get our latest and it always starts with today. We're answering a question from, right. Which That's I fair. think gets the point of cost. Yep. Um, uh, but for the podcast, I'm not really sure there's a, a any real point in that, in recording episode zero. Now the only thing the only thing that might be useful on YouTube is you can set different videos for subscribers and for new visitors. Right. It might be useful for a new visitor. So I think our Ask the Bellhop segment yeah, mostly no, I think, gets I think Ask the Bellhop works. I I, I don't really see those ever because I go in the back door. Yeah. So I I didn't know that was what you're doing. That makes a lot so of sense. So my only problem is remembering to update them. I'm oh, not perfect at remembering to update them. Trello, game. I, your, yeah, your... I need to I need to get back into Trello. But yeah. maybe the, when we get to 2020 goals, I think that has to be <laughs> on there, is find a new way to uh, plan stuff. It's weird because some of the stuff we never mess up and some of the stuff I always do and the Trello helped and then it was like annoying. I don't know. So I don't know. Episode zero fans, again, if you guys think we need an episode zero, I think at this point we're just not going to bother. I don't bother. think fans care. It's new listeners who might care, which is yeah, you can't ask them because they're not listeners yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. Would you listen to our podcast if we had an episode zero? Like uh, the, the original idea was to record a new one every year. Yeah, we had talked about that. But again, it, I don't really... it, it, we would keep it up because we've changed format a lot, like Very a surprising good. amount. <laughs> we have gone through a lot of changes. And I always go with no news is good news because very seldom do we get feedback. I have noticed that more people watch us for the first half of the show. So the whole moving to ask the question to the front half does seem to have helped. And the splitting stuff up on YouTube, which actually we're going to get to that in a bit. So I'll talk about that in a bit. But yeah, so some of the stuff we've done seems to have helped, but I've yet to have anyone really say, the only thing I've had is people miss the Gloomhaven stuff, which I keep meaning to throw back into the Tabletop Weekly to just kind of talk about which scenario we played. So there's at least something there right. for the fans of Gloomhaven. All right. Uh, still, 2018 goals. Um, extra Life. We've I've done Extra Life for, what, eight years now? It's 10 years in, whatever. Um, 2018, we raised, I don't know, maybe $7,000. And I say maybe because the way Extra Life worked last year was no matter what currency you donated in, it showed on the web page as U.S. dollars. So if you logged into our Extra Life page, it shows we raised $7,001. But that is a mix of U.S. and Canadian money, mostly Canadian, like 99% Canadian. We have like Deanna's brother, Stephen Bonacore of Stronghold Games, and a couple people on Twitter who donated to me in U.S. Everything else was raised in Canadian. So we probably made about $6,300. I don't know. So it's hard to tell. Um, I could try to get those real numbers. So this year they fixed things, kind of. When people donated in Canadian, it converted to U.S. and displayed that total which I got to admit, bummed out a bunch of locals because they really wanted to see a big number, especially someone's like, I donated 50 bucks. Where's my 50 bucks? Like, oh no, sorry. It shows whatever, 42 and change because of the exchange rate. Um, that's why if you watched our Extra Life, we have all these weird donations of like 42.83. It's because someone donated 55 US. Part of the problem is I have no idea what they use to, for the exchange rate. It doesn't match up what I see on XE or whatever. So... This year, we raised 6375 which I assure you 
is more than we made last year. So I, looking at the numbers, it doesn't look like it. So we did better than last year, but the goal we set in January was $10,000. Now, we did a lot of things right. I, I think we did some great things, like the the, the warm-up event was fantastic, the one you came down for. We had a ton of people out that day. That went really well. But there were some complications this year, especially when dealing with multiple venues. And I'm hoping we can avoid those next year. Um, I don't feel bad that we didn't hit our goal. I'm, I'm a little bit frustrated by some of the stuff that happened, but you know what? I, what I care is we did better than last year. If we just keep doing better than the year previous, I'm actually happy. But as for a target, I think I'm going to stick with 10,000 this year. I think we've got a few more people on board, and I think some of the people who are on board understand better what's involved than they did previous year. Yeah, unfortunately, between lack of follow-through on the part of some people uh, and then malicious cyber attacks on the well, actual yeah. Extra Life site on the day of Extra Life, all of that sort of combined to make it so that we didn't get the results we wanted. Uh, but that's not that they were bad results. We were just aiming higher based on prior experience and, you know, things uh, things worked against us. And uh, yeah. that was unfortunate. So, yeah, I think at this point, 10,000 is going to be our extra life goal again this year. And I, I think we have a better chance than ever of hitting it. I would love to see more support from, from Bellhop fans because most 99% of that was raised locally, which makes sense because that's where the local gamers are. But I would love to see, um, I, I know people already said they didn't like the name, but Hoplites joining the team. I, I would love to see the Bellhop team stretch out further than just in Windsor. I think that would be awesome. I would love to see people running an event in Buffalo, raising money for our group. That would be great. All right, next goal from 2019 was for Sean, and that was to work on splitting and separating the YouTube content. I gotta say, that seems to be going even better than we thought it would. Uh, indeed, uh, I think we're, I think it's definitely helped drive some traffic to it in viewing and viewing numbers. Now, if only we can find that magic sauce that makes a video succeed and another one fail, <laughs> fall flat. Um, if you've got ideas of, of stuff you'd like to, us to produce on YouTube, uh, let us know. There's still a couple of the days of the week. We're not releasing content <laughs> anything of any of any kind. So, you know. Yeah, it's possible. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. FAQ read throughs. That that's the one we didn't expect. That uh, we did the terraforming Mars one, and it's not doing as well as the Gloomhaven, but it's doing surprisingly well. Yep. Uh, we've had some requests for um, tainted Grail FAQ read through, and I'm like, I don't know. Unless I can, like, one of the suggestions was bring on an expert. And I think that's what we'd have to do: is find an expert in the game and have them on the show, and Sean and I can kind of discuss it. But we never played the game, so I don't know. Right. All right, now to game challenges. So going back to gaming, back to Nate's question. Um, I guess I did sign up to say I was going to do 10 by 10. I, I, okay, sure, I don't remember. I got to say, I, we talked about this a little while ago. I guess I succeeded if you count board game arena plays. Uh, if you don't, I failed. Uh, no, I already said it. I'm not signing up for this one in 2020. Um, I expect the, the, the pile of obligation to be my own. Only grow bigger, right? Um, Origins... I was nervous last year and there was only two of us and I'm going to be recruiting help. And I expect to that pile of obligation to be a tower of obligation by this time next year. So um, I keep making more and more industry contacts, working with more publishers. Um, I've got another one coming in when we get to the announcements tonight. I've got something I'm unboxing at the end of the show that's a prototype from a company. I just keep making more contacts, which is awesome. Uh, the brand's growing. We're getting more work, right? Um, so my 2020 is going to be all about playing new games and talking about those games rather than deep diving the games I already own. Yeah, I don't really do challenges, but what I really enjoy is to see what I have achieved and didn't achieve in hindsight. Uh, and this is why I really like that board game stats app is to look and see, you know, oh, wow, you know, I really played a bunch of games last year. I'm surprised that, you know, maybe <laughs> I next played year. more than I thought. Exactly. Uh, you know, so I hit 49 this uh, this year, um, this past year. Maybe I'll break 50 next year, you know, and that, and that'll be great. And, you know, if I, if I'm down, I can look and see why, but, uh, as far as challenges, it's not really, uh, my thing. I, in one ways, I feel like, especially because of my play, um, something like 10 to 10 by 10 might cause me to pass on playing a new game, which I might enjoy more in favor yeah. of one that I know would have helped me achieve the win. And for me, that's a loss. So yeah. 10 by 10s are usually people that own like 100 games, right? Yeah. 
or 500 games and it's like i always play the new stuff and i want to deep dive dive the games i love right, right. that's that's usually what a 10 by 10 it's usually the push right and which i get like I, I like an acrony it was my top game of last year i would love to play that 10 times and really like get to know the different factions and how the game plays and but it's not going to happen all right one of the other challenges i accepted last year that i really wish i could commit to is rpg a month um I kind of own this one, right? Roger Braslett is the person who started it on G+, but I kind of took the reins. I took it over from him. Uh, he stopped doing it, and I keep trying to keep this one alive. I have a group on MeWe where we do it. I talk about it on Twitter now and then, but I just don't get enough role-playing in, right? Like a tabletop bellhop, but it's mostly board games anymore. Uh, without playing RPGs, it's really hard for me to justify spending free time reading new ones every month. While I would love to read a new role-playing game every month, I just know it's not realistic, especially when I'm not playing. Now, for 2020, what I do want to commit to is getting my Monday night game group, my home group, to play RPGs. Anything. I don't even care what at this point. We keep talking about it. We keep pushing it. I had them at the table. I had DCC characters, and I bribed them with funky dice, and I still couldn't get the group back. So I... I there, there's a couple games we have to play. That Pile of Obligation has some RPGs in it. Shadowrun, 6th edition, is one of them. And Runaway Hirelings, Thomas Novacell. I'm sorry. We still haven't gotten your game played. I, I'm trying. I'm trying. So there's some that I have to do. They're all obligations. But I just don't want... Like, in 2019, I think I ran one session of Rocker Boys and Vending Machines. And other than that, the only RPGs I did were at cons which I love that I got to play some games at cons, but that's not all I want. Yeah, well, I feel I should really try and get into an RPG, even just one session at a con, uh, dealing with social anxiety issues at the con. Um, uh, because, I mean, you don't, you don't even get any RPGs with your regular group, so I'm not going to yeah. expect you to start up, a, start up any. As much as I would love to play um, yeah, an online, Shadows, you... Onla you know, an online game of Shadows uh, and, and, you know, get that Warhammer feel up and going, you know, there, again, we've already got enough content <laughs> being yeah. generated. I we we can't really find time to do that. Plus, finding the other players for online and blah blah yeah. blah. Um, it's just not realistic. And I am actually getting some online uh, some online play. We we were down for the the holidays, and hopefully that'll start up again soon uh, for some online RPGs. Uh, elsewhere. That, that's the hard part too. Is like, I know I can find a group online, right? Nowadays it's pretty easy. Yeah. There's probably enough people I could run a game for the chat room, right? <laughs> uh, and the people would probably love it. But it just, I have the group. They're here. They're physically here. Yeah. They come to my house. It just, it hasn't quite worked. Yep. But yeah, we got to get you to play a con game, especially like, like Breakout, right? Like you do it at one of those games where you're playing with the gem pe people, people you're already comfortable with instead of strangers. Well, I'm not even necessarily wor that worried about it. It's, 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 it's mostly just getting me to the table. I, yeah. I don't want to go to the table because I don't know them. But once I'm at the table, I'm fine. That's one of those things, you know. So I, you and I will sign up to play can, One Child's Heart. And... Well, then, no. Um, well, that's the other thing, though, is that actually I I almost need to do it do a, a session without you because normally you and I go and sit at the yeah. table together. Um, that's true. So really, I should uh, you know find a session of Worldwide Wrestling or something and sit down at. So if um, Tom Flanagan's running um. If we, if we ever find him running another table of Tales for the Loop, the two of us, I've got to play that again. Oh, yeah. Because that was just way too good. I think that was 2018, wasn't it? Uh, that was QCC when I did. Yeah, that was 2018 yeah. then, because you weren't at QCC yeah. last year. All right. Um, final resolution last year uh, is what we end up calling Less Shame, More Game. Hashtag Less Shame, More Game. The Less Shame, More Game Challenge. Uh, at the time, we added a tracker to the top of... Um, to the top of the show here for those of us joining live the people who yeah i don't know one of those directions there was a tracker uh that we had out here on twitch and you can see on our youtube videos and we talk about it at the end of every week how many games went on and how many games went off and i gotta say i think it was going really good at the beginning of the year like i was burning through games at a great rate like a, it's it's the workout thing i guess right like <laughs> i think it lasted past february but like at first i was doing good and i think if we had kept up that rate I might have got through most, if not all of the games in my current pile of shame. Yeah, no, sadly, the pile of obligation ratcheted yeah. the number up too high. Mm. And the turnover meant that the games were for a while coming in as fast as they were being taken yeah. off. We actually had a number of episodes where we were calculating the net change yeah. in the pile as some were played, but more were added on. And so it, it just wasn't a valid counter. Yeah, it it was just, just sort of hovering at us. A level 
Um, yeah, and, and at this point, it's probably still around that same level because I continue to get new stuff. That's yeah. the pile behind me is some new stuff I've got. Now, what I did think was interesting is I went through, I, I booted up my spreadsheet. I hadn't touched it in, in months. Like, again, probably since Origins. And um, I went and added the new games I got for Christmas and stuff, right? And I did play a ton of the games I got in 2019. Like, if you just took my pile of shame and, like, if it had been wiped clean and I just took in, here's what you got in 2019 versus what you played, there were literally only nine games left. Like, I had played everything else I got in 2019. That counts stuff I bought, gifts, and the stuff I got from Origins, stuff I got from publishers. Like, nine left. There were five expansions also. And I got to say, that's pretty damn good for me. Like, that's probably better than any other year. Usually when I'm doing my pile of shame... Like the it goes down, but it also goes up with the new stuff from that year. And then by the time I get into the next year, the pile is usually about the same size. It's just newer games that weren't in there before. Whereas this year, the old stuff's still there because I didn't touch any of the old stuff. But most of the new stuff when it came in came out. Like there were a lot of games that like got played within a week of getting them. Right? Yeah. Like they they came in, they got played, they went away. Well, not went away. <laughs> so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the spreadsheet going, but I'm not doing any challenge. Right? Like I said, I can't. Right? I, I, the pile of obligation, I could come back from Origins with 120 games. I might come back from Origins with five. I don't know. I might get emailed tomorrow from Restoration. I, I, no, here, there's the one I want to see. I want Restoration Games to email me tomorrow and say, you're reviewing Dark Tower, because that would be awesome. Right? Like, I want to see that. And they want it done in a week. I'll get that done in a week, right? Uh, my goal, though, is to get through the pile of obligation, right? Like, this just makes sense. The pile of obligations, I want to be zero. Well, I don't want it to be zero because I want new stuff to be constantly getting in, but I want to keep on getting content out for all the games I receive in a in a reasonable time frame. Which I, I guess that's a that's a, that's a goal, but like that that should just be a goal of any reviewer, right? Yeah. I, I hope to review everything I receive to review. Yeah. Uh, and if and if that number ever did hit zero, that means no more unboxings or reviews, yeah. and that's no good for you guys. So that's true. Yeah, yeah. I don't want it to hit zero. I, I just I want to keep up. Oh yeah, I want to maintain. I'm pretty happy with where I am with the stuff from Origins. Like I'm I'm certain by Origins 2020, I'll have done everything from Origins 2019. All right. Um. Anything else? What do we got? So 2020. What do we have for 2020 goals? Uh, personal for you, for me, for the whole Belfop thing. Uh, I think for me, my main goal is to get a new graphic uh, intro extra for YouTube happening. Uh, right. Well, I like our little rendered bell that we use as, as a you know thumbnail on and the the intro uh, uh, video. Uh, it's a bit boring, so I started learning some new software back in December uh, with the initial goal of learning enough to be able to set up and and update that that video intro. Oh. Um, so once I get that done, I'm hoping, you know, by say March or so, depending on, you know, how I, how I do and how over, overzealous I get with the actual, uh, <laughs> animation. Um, it's just seeing, you know, how we can make our content better or more interesting or more something, uh, to get us to that next level and, uh, you know, drive viewers to the channel. Uh, one of the things I'd like to do is get the logo changeover officially done, um, We've updated a ton of things, a lot of it. You can see some of it on our stream right now. Anyone watching has the bell in that corner now and our new wider video and our new font up at the top and all that stuff. Um, but I haven't done it everywhere, right? Um, one of the big ones is the web page itself. We need the title, but the problem is we need Erin's help. She did something so that the bell shows up in line with the text with CSS that Deanna and I is well, well past our ability. I went in once and tried to change it and ooh, no, not good. <laughs> so, so we need some help from our webmaster and our webmaster um, is amazing. Aaron is awesome and works mostly for free. So I don't want to put pressure on her to do it and help us out for free. So when she has time, we'll get her help and we'll get it done. Uh, social media, I'm going to be changing my social media picks right now. I've got the bell where it says tabletop bellhop. I'll be ditching the words. I wanted to keep it for a few months. So that people recognized it. Now that that's gone, I just want the bell so everyone recognizes the bell. Uh, it's already hard to read on most devices anyway, so that's a goal. Um, the big one, though, that I'm going to have a hard time with that I, we, I don't know, DNI need to look at are header images. Header images everywhere. Header images on Facebook, header images on events, header images on Patreon. Everywhere's got different sizes, stupid banners. And I don't even know what to put there. Like, I don't know what our. Like my, the graphic I used when we launched this was a shot of my basement 
on New Year's Eve after Sean had shown up and there's actually some like squirt guns sitting on the table that I forgot to clear off before snapping the pick. Like, and I, I usually put our logo over top of that. So you can't see the, they're not squirt guns, but um, dart guns or whatever, suction cup guns. I, I pick up random dollar store toys on the way to yes. New Year's parties. And, uh, and like, it, it's a picture of my game room. It kind of works, but I don't know. It, 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 it worked for, for when we needed something, but we need something better. And I don't know if that's just, our bars with the yellow and the gold and our new logo. I don't know what it is, but that that's a, that's a big one. That's a big step. And adding to that, which I didn't have in the show notes. So we got to get merch out there. If I remember correctly, Poncho is someone who is looking for shirts and we now have the logos. We have the stuff. We just yep. need to, to take that next step and get that wherever, whether that's using Twitch to do it, which I don't think is probably not the best choice or going through like a red bubble or whatever, but whatever it happens to be, we need to get shirts and then that'll tie in with going to those cons is yep. if we can show up with our own merch and heck throw some in the trunk in case anyone wants to buy some on us while we're there. Yep. Right. So we're also happy to listen to suggestions for other content. I mean, we've talked about reading game manuals and discussing them to go along with our fact. Yeah. I think you read throughs, uh, but we don't know what people would actually watch. Um, and there's only, you know, so much, uh, so much we're willing to throw at a wall to see if it sticks. Uh, yeah, but, you know, like, 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 was is anyone interested in Sean pulling a Jeff Engelstein and doing audio books of board game rule books? <laughs> I know Sean's got the better voice for it, or even discussing the rule books. Like Sean describes the rule, and then I talk about how it may affect in play. I don't know the way the FAQs have ta taken off. Um, as I mentioned when we talked about Sean, I don't know if we can read out rule books. I don't know if they're already out in PDF. I don't think it'd be a problem. But I don't know. There's companies out there like Ultra Board Games that, as far as I can tell, just retype board game rule books on their web page. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know I with don't, copyright and rule books. Yeah. I mean, we'd want to look into it, but I don't think it, it, it would be a big difficulty. I mean, you look at Board Game uh, Board Game Geek, and most of that stuff is all duplicated. You know, it's. Yeah, I know. So it'd there. be interesting to look into. Heck, it might be a market even. Like that, that could be a thing. We'll, we'll start doing flipping RPG rule books and companies can pay Sean to read off shit. That would be awesome. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm yeah. not sure. Like he's talking about fiction books not being able to read. I, I don't I don't think you copyright rule books in the rule, same way. Well, you, you can't copyright... copyright rules in the first place. So yeah. that's part of it. So. But I think the rule books fall under one of them. Yeah. Probably copyright, not trademark. It would make sense to be copyright. How the rules are written falls under one, but not the rules themselves. The rules themselves are public domain, which is why people can completely rip off games. Right. Flavor text is completely yeah, different. Yeah, I don't know. Different story into a different issue, but we we should do more FAQs. They seem to work. But that's, I mean, that's, literally, that's, that's one of those things where I could reach out to a publisher and say, "Look, we do this with can, FAQs. Can I read your rule book can on I do, YouTube? Can I do this on YouTube? And we're, we're, we're you know the thing is we are going to be discussing it. The, I don't think just me reading it is is valid yeah. content. But if we did a re read and discussion, then we gain the whole, you know, uh, analysis of it, which invalidates well, any copyright point, claim yeah, in the first that point, point. I don't even think you have to ask. No. Because um, at that point, it's commentary, right? Yeah, yeah. I would think. So. All right. Anything else? I was kind of opening this up to Sean because Sean and I, like, I write the notes and Sean looks at the notes, but we don't always discuss everything ahead of time. We didn't really discuss this. Yeah, no. Um, really, it's, it's... I would love to get 75 people in the chat room at once, but I don't expect that'll ever happen. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like, like popular shows like ours don't get, like, we, we have a fantastic group. I'm not trying to belittle the people who do join us, yeah. but Twitch wants us to get an average of 75 of you in the chat room, which I think it kind of sucked. They'd be kind of awesome if we had 75 people listening. Like, the, the validation of that would be great, but yeah. we wouldn't be able to pay attention. Like, we wouldn't be able to get that interaction to that one-on-one. -on -one. So, I don't know. I, I want that because that's an important thing for Twitch, but... Yep. Um, yeah, uh, I, mean, I would do, I would do a we, The fact that we have 15 people in the room at any one time is amazing. Oh, that's I, awesome. You know, I'd love... You know, if we hit 25... 20 would, would be, be great. 20, away. 25. I, if if awesome. I ever saw 25 people in here on, like, more than one night... I would be amazed. It would be fantastic. But yeah, 75 people on average in your chat is a Twitch thing, kind of like the 1,000 people on YouTube. The 1,000 people on YouTube seems more plausible. Yep. All right. Uh, so. I don't think we have anything else. I yep. can't think of any other big ones. Just to, uh, keeping it growing, right? Keep it going. Um, we have some goals for the blog. We're really, really close. So if you have some spare time, anyone listening to this, head over to tabletopbellhop.com. 
read an article, read a review, click a link, maybe leave me a question. That would be awesome. Just stop by, take a look at the website. Even if you've been there before, see what we've changed, see what we've done. Uh, we are really pushing towards a certain number that will let us put, get to a certain level of advertising we can put on the page. And yes, I know I'm telling you to go to my page so I can add ads on it. You know what? It's a fact of life. Yep. You're going to find ads on web. We're one of the few pages out there that doesn't at least have Google ads on there. And we're hoping to have something that's a little bit more tied into our actual content, a bit more thematic and less obtrusive. We don't plan on having pop-ups or pop-unders or anything like that. We could go with all those tricks. We're trying to avoid that. Yep. But we need the numbers to be able to prove that we're good enough to have that. So, Yep. All righty. So, uh, what kinds of resolutions have you folk in the lobby made as we check into you? We've had a lot of chat going on. <laughs> yeah, it's a little hard. <laughs> hey, it's... Darth, Rev, and Wood, Wolf, we're about halfway through. We're about halfway through the show. We had a longer than usual Ask the Bell Hop segment. Yep. That took a little longer to get through. I was more talkative than I had planned. <laughs> uh, way earlier, I saw people talking about the resolutions, but then we got on to other things. Yeah, uh, I know, uh, well, Major Kayla is, is uh, doing a, uh, a running a con game, two con games, looks like. Uh, she's, That's awesome. She's got one confirmed, and she's got one person signed up to her second one already. Awesome for that, awesome. and maybe may even bring something do something at breakout. Hey, running running your first con game is big. Yep, I did it years ago, like years and years ago. I ran Paranoia and Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. I don't know if I could do it now. I I had less social anxiety back then than I do now. I don't know. I was more comfortable with the people I thought would be at the con. I don't know. Yep, yeah, Poncho wants to learn how to solve a Rubik's cube. Absolutely. That's not, you know what? Deanna got this thing though. Oh my God, is it horrible in a way? So she picked up this thing at a con she went to, and it's an app, a Rubik's Cube with an app where you scan in all the sides of the Rubik's Cube and it tells you how to solve it based on what it looked like when you scan it. The problem is the software for this thing wanted the most ridiculous permissions I have ever seen. It not only wanted to see my camera, it wanted to be able to take pictures, record audio, record video, send emails. Like it was like every pot. I'm like, what did this Chinese company like come up with this Rubik's Cube thing just to steal people's data? Right. Like it was terrible. I'm like, I am not authorizing this thing to do anything. <laughs> but there are apps out there that will show you how to solve a Rubik's Cube because I right. found that after that it is like this one. You scan each of the sides. And it literally tells you in like six moves or less. It's crazy how few moves it takes to solve a Ruby's Cube when yeah, you're being efficient. It really it's like is, ridiculous. Yeah. Like I looked at this thing and I'm like, I messed it up for a good half hour while the kids were <laughs> opening gifts. And then I grabbed my phone. I turned on the app. I said no to all the damn things it wanted to see except camera. And then I took pictures of all the sides and it was like seven moves to fix it. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> and supposedly once you do that, it unlocks other stuff to teach you how to do it. So oh, okay. that's a thing. Uh, yeah, Poncho is talking is in more gaming. You know, just wants to get I, more. That's, that's pretty much everyone's. I think. I, I think every gamer has that resolution: play more games. Yep. I I, I want to play more games with more people. I don't know. Like I, I I could try to get another event in Windsor because there's a weekend a month we don't do anything. But then I kind of don't want to. Yeah, there there's definitely something to be said about having a little bit of self time. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so. I like the fact that we have easy mode now. I think that was a success, though I was not trying to um, trying to do it, but I wanted a non-game store venue. And I think it's great we have a non-game store venue now. Yep. Uh, Poncho mentioned at one point uh, when you're adding uh, adding bribes for Patreon, donuts. Uh, <laughs> I would just give out donuts. I thought he was talking about instead of hoplites that we were going to call our fans our donuts. <laughs> that's why it's, I maybe I read it wrong because it was going through. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure he was looking for bribes. Uh, oh, he was looking for bribes. bribes. We'll send donuts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll send Tim Hortons. We'll, we'll, we'll can con some people. You can get Tim Hortons in the States now. That's what we can We can offer coffee crisp at a certain backer level. Oh, we'll send go. coffee crisp to the U.S. Uh, Tim and Horton, Kinder Toys. Tim Hortons cereal. They now have Timbit cereal. Um, I saw that when we were at Costco. It scared I was me. Disturbed. Yeah, it scared me. Yeah, <laughs> Patreon Smarties, yes, which yeah, are yeah. like M and M's, not yeah, yeah. rockets. Not not rockets. Smarty, Smarty, our Smarties are M and M's ish. Yes. Yeah. Kinder don't eggs, mess with Kinder eggs. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Not not gonna try and import Kinder eggs. You have to get the right ones. See what we get here are German Kinder eggs, and they are awesome. There's a European deli that carries them, and they are way better toys. 
but they are not safe. Like the Canadian ones they've now made, so you can actually ship them over the border. The plastic now goes through, so the the two chocolate halves aren't solid. I don't know, whatever. Ketchup chips, yeah, I don't know. There's lots of Canadian. There's surprisingly more Canadian stuff than I thought there was. The last time I was looking, there was something we were talking about the other day, and they're like, oh, that's Canadian. I'm like, what? It is. Yeah, there was a few things I saw the other day. I'm like, yeah, I was yeah, like, I really? Chocolate bars, there's a bunch. Like, yeah. there, there's, besides, like, Coffee crunch, cr Crisp is the one everyone talks about, which are fantastic. I love Coffee Crisp. But there's more than that. Yeah, yeah. There's a few, Brit there's a few British British ones that, that we get that we take for granted that Americans don't get sort of thing. Yeah, Aero. That's the other one. I didn't know Aero was Canadian. And oh, we wow. have all kinds of flavors of Aero now. Oh, yeah. Well, like, we have mint and I like the mint. weird. I'm sorry. I don't want. I don't want my chocolate bars looking like it's crushed up grasshoppers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, the Kinder eggs are like that in Canada too. It's not inside. It's two parts. Right. Yeah. Coffee Crisp was the big one. Yeah, I love. All right. So I don't know if we had a new viewer who I don't know if they stuck around. Uh, yeah, we're halfway through the show. We're gonna lose half our viewers because we always do. Yeah, I think Darth popped out. Darth popped out. All right. Fair enough. Have to try poutine. Poutine can be good. Yeah. Actually, it's hard to find bad poutine, but good poutine's hard to find. And you're not going to find it in downtown Toronto. Well, I don't know. They're, they're, I'm sure there are some poutineries there. Um, I don't know. No, when, when at Breco, they had a real hard time trying to find actually good pro poutine in the in the area. Oh, okay. Because um, I know, like, the fa some of the fast food poutine is, is edible. Some of it is just horrible. One of the weird ones... I was I had expected that New York fries would have decent poutine because yeah, they're it's, a fry thing. It's horrible. it's okay. I didn't. Um, I, I actually yeah, prefer. I, it was okay. I actually prefer Harvey's poutine. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna do fast food poutine, uh, Harvey's tends to be uh, my go-to. Yeah. Uh, See, we have we, the, there's a place in Windsor called Simon's Prime Burger, and they make the best poutine okay. in the we area. We have a we have a poutinery in like it's actually called the poutinery in in Hamilton. Um, and we did, I ordered like four different ones from, for dinner one oh, night yeah. and uh, it was, they were good. See, there's yeah. one downtown too, but like I hear I'm a bad Canadian. I don't really like poutine. So mm -hmm. I don't like fries. I am not, I've never well, liked fries. I don't fries. normally like gravy. I love fries and it's yeah. like gravy, but you know, when you like go to the poutine, it's, but... it's not usually great. Like they've got like the gyros one and the Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it's... But the one I like is a, is a double bacon cheeseburger. It's got ground beef and two types of cheese and bacon and it's it's not normal poutine but they're normal poutine i do like i just again I, I could get that or i could get a burger and i'd rather have a burger with mozzarella and bacon on it because right. i'd rather eat that than fries with a bunch of stuff on it because <laughs> i'm not a huge fry fan yep yeah i don't like ho hockey much i don't like poutine i do like i do like coffee crisp so yeah i love coffee crisp don't do hockey love poutine um I don't hate hockey. It's 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 I I like it as much as any other sport that I don't that's, watch. That's pretty low on the list for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, there are many sports I would I would rather watch curling than uh, hockey. I don't know if that makes me more Canadian or less Canadian. Uh, <laughs> I think that's actually more Canadian. It's more actual Canadian versus worldview of Canadian. Right. Halifax style Donaire. Is that just because there's a Donaire on like every corner in Halifax? Last time I was there. Um. It was pizza, I like the, pizza Donaire. Donaire, the pizza and Donaire thing in Windsor, that was happening in Halifax, too. It was really oh, yeah. weird. So we don't get the Donaire. Donaire. Now everything here is um, Mediterranean. Oh, uh, okay. But but we're at the point now, it's one in four people in Windsor now is um, an immigrant. One, one in three. I think we're down to one, up to one in three now, because we've taken in so many Syrian well, yeah. refugees. I mean, Crokinole, you can't go a lot. You can't go without. Uh, See, I've never <laughs> actually played Crokinole. Really? Like, despite the fact we had that, like, all-in-one game table thing yeah. when I was a kid and we kind of flicked around with it, but I've never actually, like, yeah. played Crokinole, which I probably love because I love, like, pitch car and I yeah. love dexterity games. But, like, a Crokinole table costs so much money, yes. like a good one. Yeah, well, yeah. a decent one. I don't need a good one. I just need a decent one. All right. We, we've been going on. <laughs> all enough. right. Moving on. 